All right, mass six, unit six, less than 11, distributed property, part three, our last part of this one here. Let's practice writing equivalent expressions by using the distributed property. All right, part A, part one, a rectangle with dimensions of six centimeters, there it is that, and W centimeters is partitioned into two smaller rectangles. Explain why each of the expressions represents the area of the shaded portion. So we're looking at the shaded portion here. So first of all, we can see that if we thought about a couple things. The whole thing is definitely 6 times w. That's the whole large rectangle, right? The whole thing. That's the whole thing. And what they're subtracting here in 24 is what? They're saying we'll subtract that part. Why? 6 times 4 is 24. So the whole thing minus the 24 gives you the shaded part. That makes sense. Another way of thinking about it with, with the shaded property is that this value here, if I want to do six times an unknown, right? I want to know six times a question mark. Well, what is that question mark going to be? To find that question mark, the question mark's value is the whole length, w, and then take away four, subtracting four. So that's where this one comes from there, all right? And that's kind of a review of what we've been looking at with distributed property in the previous lessons. And this next activity says to match each expression in column one to an equivalent expression in column two. If you get stuck, consider drawing a diagram. Okay, so just some matching here to see what's gonna make sense. So in this one, we have a times one plus two plus three. Now, these could all be combined, perhaps. I can get one plus two is three, plus three is six. So I could look for something like a six a. Do I see a six a anywhere? I don't really see a six a anywhere. So that didn't help me out too much, okay. Um, what else do I see? Well, so what if we distribute each one? And we can have a times one is a, a times two is two a, and a times three is three a. And sure enough, look at that, there it is right there. So a goes with this one right there. Good deal. Next one, 12 times 12, two times 12 minus four. Well, I'm looking for some 12s here, I see a 12 here. There's 12 times 2, so that would be distributing there. And we would say minus, so that checks out there. And then 2 times 4 is right there, so that one works nicely. So there it is. Over here we have 12a plus 3b. Hmm, well, that's nice. I can see, though, that they each have something in common. They each have a 3 in common. How many 3s are in there? Well, there are 4 3s in here, and there's 1 there. So do we see anything where we can take a 3 out? Well, in this case here, 3 times 4a is 12a, and 3 times b is 3b, so we find the match right there. Here we have 2 thirds times 15a minus 18. Let's just go ahead and do this here. Well, 2 thirds times 15a, 3 goes into 15 5 times, so I'd end up with 2 times 5 is 10a. Any 10 a so far? This is looking pretty promising. How about 2 thirds times 18? Well, 3 goes into 18 6 times, and 2 times 6 is going to be 12, and 12, and that's it. So that one does match up just fine. So we'll put D there. This one, that's already together. Let's go over to this one. So 0.4 times a 5. Hmm, that's not one I'm familiar with too much, right? So let's do 0.4, let's do 5, becomes 20, and the decimal becomes 2. And then we do 0.4 times 2.5, and we got 20, 8, 9, 10, and we end up with 1. Is that what I'm looking at there? 2.5, never go backwards. 2.5 times 4, 8, 9, 10, and yeah, we're good. So 1. Uh, so A minus a just seemed funny and so that is right here f goes there now let's distribute these and see if we can go this way go the other way 2 times 3 is 6a plus 2 times 5 is 10b so we can see there's e right there which leaves us with g right there so it's kind of helpful i think it's just what you see probably to do multiply or distribute first so kind of like start here with this one, start here with this one, here and here, and then work over here and start there and there and there for the others. And that matches up just fine.
All right, let's see what's on the next page. Writing equivalent expressions, using the distributed property to use the property to write equivalent expressions. In each row, use the distributed property to write an equivalent expression. If you get stuck, draw a diagram. All right, so let's, here's the product, here's some are different. So this is three times three is nine plus three X there. Now let's see what do they both have in common. We can take a four out of here. If I take a four out of the first one, I'm left with just the X. 20 divided by four is what? It is five. Keep your minus sign, and there we are. Let's distribute this one. We have X times nine is nine X minus 5x. Now this is a great one. You might be thinking to yourself, the numbers. I don't see anything in common with 4 and 7. That's okay. What do they have in common? They both have an x in front. So let's take an x out of each term. If I take an x out of here, what's left? 4. If I take an x out of here, what's left? 7. And we're okay. On this side, let's multiply. 3 times 2 is 6x. And 3 times 1 is 3. What do these have in common? We have a 10 and a 5. I'd say a 5 is in common with both of them there. So how many 5's are in 10? There are two 5's in 10, and keep the x, and keep the minus sign there to match that one. How many 5's are in 5? 1. In this problem here, they each have an x in common. So we're gonna take an x out of all of those. So if I take an x out, what's left? 1. That's what you gotta be careful of. There's still one there. X times one is X. If I take X out of here, what's left? Two. And if I take X out of there, what's left? Three. All right. Half times X is one half X. And a half times minus six is minus three. And here, Y times three X is three X Y. And then Y times four Z is four Y Z. One thing to note real quick is notice that I tend to go in A, B, C order. X, Y, Y, Z. When you write your variables, you almost always write them in alphabetical order. All right, and finally over here, what do they have in common? Uh, they don't all have X's, but they all have a Z, and the numbers don't have anything in common, so we can take a Z out of everything, and what am I left with here? 2XY minus 3Y plus 4X. All right, so long and lengthy, but that certainly does work. Okay, so in summary, the distributed property can be used to write a sum as a product or write a product as a sum. You can always draw a partition tri rectangle to help reason about it, but with enough practice, you should be able to apply a distributed property without making a drawing. So these are just some examples here, things that we've done, and more that you can kind of come back to, to kind of ref as a reference. I'm going to pause there, let you work on your homework, and then we'll come and check that in just a second. All right, homework check for lesson 11, math 6, unit 6. For each expression, use distributed property to write an equivalent expression. So 4 times x is 4x, and 4 times 2, keep the plus sign there, is 8. Over here x times 6 is 6x, keep the plus sign, and x times 8 is 8x. Over here, 4 times 2 is 8, and keep the x there, plus 4 times 3 is 12. Then we do 6 times x is 6x, plus 6 times y is 6y, plus 6 times z is 6z. Prior rewrites the expression 8y minus 24 as 8 times y minus 3. Han writes 8y minus 24 as 2 times 4y minus 12. Our prior's and Han's expressions each equivalent to what we started with. Well, let's just see. If they're equivalent, we should be able to use distributed property and arrive back at where we started. So here is um, prior's, and Han did 2 times 4y minus 12. Well, 8 times y is 8y, and 8 times 3 is 24, keeping the minus there. Here we have 2 times 4 is 8y, minus 2 times 12 is 24. So when you distribute them, we see that they are indeed the same, so they are both equivalent expressions. The difference is that Priya factored out an 8, and Han factored out a 2. Those are both fine. They could also have factored out technically a 4. 
right? Because how many fours are in eight? Two. How many fours are in 24? Six. And that would actually be another equivalent expression. Number three. Select all the expressions that are equivalent to 16x plus 36. All right, so if you factor out a 16, hmm, the 16 has to factor, it's not just subtract, 16 has to go into that. Does 16 go into 36? No, 16 times 2 is actually 32. So that's not going to work. You can't do x plus 20 because 16 times 20 is not 36. That's a no. Here we have an x factored out. But does that have an x in it? Nope. So you can't factor an x out of something that's not there. Not going to work. Here they factor out a 4. Well, 16 divided by 4 is 4. 36 divided by 4 is 9. So that becomes 16x plus 36. That works great. Here they're factoring out a 2. Well, what is 16 divided by 2? 8. That works. And 36 divided by 2 is 18. So that works just fine. And this one, they factored two out of the first one, but forgot the last one, so no. Number four. The area of a rectangle is 30 plus 12x. List at least three possible uh, three possibilities for the length and width of the rectangle. So the area of the rectangle is 30 plus 12x. Wow, that's tricky there, right? So we have 30 plus 12x. So what can we factor out of all of this? to have two numbers we multiply together, okay? Well, I know they're both even, so I could factor out a two. If I factor out a two, I would have 15, that's half of 30, plus six x. So I'd end up with a rectangle that looks like this, a length of two, and maybe a length of 15, and a length of six x, okay? What else could I do? I want three possibilities. I factor out a two, can you factor out a three? Yes, you could factor out a 3 and do the same thing. 3 goes into both of those. You could also factor out a 6 because 6 goes into both of those as well. Okay, so those are some options there. So fact, you can let the, I'll let you figure those ones out and see what you come up with. Number 5, select all expressions that are equivalent to 1 half of z. Half of z, okay, uh, it's not z times z, that's z squared. That's not going to work z divided by 2, well, I'll think about this here. This is z divided by 2, which becomes z times the reciprocal, um, that's our z, which is z over 2, or what's right there. So that matches that, so that's going to work. z plus z is 2z, so that's not going to work. And a quarter z plus a quarter z actually equals a half of a z. That would work as well. Okay, number six. What is the perimeter of a square with side length 3, 7, and s? So perimeter is going to be found by doing this one and this one and this one and this one four times, right? So you take a side length and you multiply it by four. So for perimeter, we're going to do three times four, which is going to be 12 centimeters. For this one, we're going to do seven times four, which is 28 centimeters. And for s, we would do 4s centimeters. We just multiply by 4. So what's the perimeter of square? If the, oh sorry, if the perimeter of square is 360, what's the side length? Well, what we knew was that 4 times the side length gives me the perimeter. So in this case here, we know that the perimeter is 360. So we divide both sides by 4, and s equals 90. All right, next one. What's the area of a square? with the side lengths of this. Well, a square for the area, it's the length times the width. We multiply those together. So 3 times 3 is 9 centimeters squared. And 7 times 7 is 49 centimeters squared. And s times s is s squared centimeters squared. Now the same idea here. If the area of a square is 121 centimeters, what's the side length? So the side squared equals 121. So we want to think about there is what number times itself can actually get you to 121. So knowing some math facts, we know that 11 times 11 equals 121. So we know that S equals 11. Now one thing we haven't talked about and won't this year is technically to figure that out 
if you took the square root of both sides, that would tell you that those cancel, the square root cancels the square, and the square root of 121 is actually 11. All right, number seven, solve each equation. So let's do this here. We have 10 equals 4y, divide both sides by four. So y equals 10 over four, which reduces down to five over two. This one, we're gonna divide both sides by five. So y equals, well, five goes into 17.5 how many times? Goes into 17 three times for 15. We have five there, so 3.5. So next one, we're gonna divide both sides by 10. All right, and so, well, 1.036 1 1.036, I can't do on my calculator, my big fingers today, 1.036, so there's our number, 1.036 divided by 10, what's gonna happen to our decimal? It just slides over one spot. So it's gonna move that way one spot when we divide by 10. So it gets 0 0.1036 equals y. Our next one, we're going to divide both sides by 0 0.6, 0 0.6. And you think, well, that's kind of like, I don't know what that is. Hmm, you probably do. Think about this. Do you know what 18 divided by 6 is? Sure, 18 divided by 6 is 3, right? So you know it has to do with a 3. So what happens to those decimals? 1.8 divided by 0 0.6 equals just simply 3. And that's it. And over here, we're going to divide both sides by a tenth. And so 15 divided by 0 0.1, whoops, 15 divided by 0 0.1 equals 150. So this one, we divide by a tenth, we're going to move the decimal over that way one more. All right, that's it for today. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time.